In case you missed my last video, I recently added this beast of a new CNC to my shop, and after getting the machine assembled, my next project was getting the spoil board situated. After going down the CNC rabbit hole on YouTube and seeing what was possible with a vacuum work holding setup, I decided that was the way I wanted to go. So I started doing some research and I came across the Black Box Hurricane, which is a relatively small vacuum pump system that would be perfect for this 4x8 Avid CNC. The first thing to work on to get the vacuum table up and running was creating the plenum, which is the base panel through which the air travels to the vacuum. And this panel needs to be sealed in some way to keep air from leaking through the wrong areas of it. And I figured melamine would be the perfect material for this since it's already sealed on two faces. To seal the edges, I first cleaned them up with my track saw and then added some peel and stick PVC edge banding from Rockler. And this blocks the air from flowing through the edges of the panel. I rolled the edge banding after sticking it on to activate the adhesive, then trimmed it flush with the panel with this little trimming tool, and finally broke the sharp edges with this sanding tool. And I repeated the process on all four sides of the panel, and then I could move the panel onto the bed of the CNC. Since I'd be cutting mounting holes into and through this plenum panel, I went ahead and spaced it off the aluminum extrusion pieces using some strips of 3 quarter inch plywood, and then I very strategically clamped the panel in place to avoid hitting the clamps with the bit, which you might have seen me do in my last video. Next I needed to cut the mounting holes, and I created a spoil board and plenum file for making these cuts using Vectric Aspire. I based the mounting locations on the spoil board file that Avid offers for download on their website, but I did make a few modifications. So I'd be cutting a grid pattern into this plenum board for the airflow, and I needed to make sure these mounting holes wouldn't interfere with that grid, so I ended up resizing the recessed areas around the holes for the bolt heads, just making the recesses as small as I could. I used a quarter inch compression bit from Bits Bits for cutting these holes, and after a few <laughs> false starts, since I'm still figuring out the software side of things here, the holes were cut perfectly, and you can see how the bolts fit into the recessed holes with just a little wiggle room for mounting. Now I could only cut one half of the plenum board at a time because of where I needed to clamp the panel, so next I reset my clamps and cut the second half of the holes into the plenum. Unfortunately I ran into some issues here and somehow screwed up the Z height on the machine, so what were supposed to be the recessed areas ended up being cut all the way through the plenum, making those holes useless for mounting. Luckily I could just cut a handful of extra mounting holes in those areas and this ended up working out fine. Before removing the plywood spacers, I also went ahead and dropped the roll-in T-nuts into the aluminum cross members, and then I could remove the plywood and add the mounting bolts which thread into those T-nuts. With the plenum attached to the bed, I could load up a 3 8 inch compression bit, also from Bits Bits, to cut the grid pattern into the plenum, which was really cool to watch. Finally, after cutting the grid, the CNC cut one hole at the center of each of the grid sections, which is where the PVC ducting coming from the vacuum will attach. Unfortunately, I didn't realize my dust collector was pretty much full before I started cutting, and it is insane how much dust these types of cuts generate. Anyway, with that, the plenum was pretty much done, so next I could move the Hurricane vacuum into place under the CNC. And this thing is super heavy, as it's an all-steel enclosure with four super beefy vacuum pumps inside, and I definitely needed a helping hand moving this thing into place. The first bit of work I did to connect the vacuum to the plenum was to add these PVC shower drains to the underside of the plenum. I pre-drilled a few mounting holes through the shower drains and then mounted them to the underside of the plenum, centered on the holes I had cut earlier. And I added plenty of caulk to seal that connection and then added screws to attach them permanently. Next, I attached the 3 inch threaded male adapters to the canister filter, which runs in line in the vacuum ductwork to keep any fine dust from getting into the vacuum pumps. I could then attach the canister filter to the vacuum, threading on another male adapter to the intake on the vacuum, and then adding a piece of 3 inch PVC between the adapter and the canister filter. I added an elbow to the other side of the canister filter to turn the ductwork back parallel with the vacuum, and then I could install the four PVC T's which will split the airflow to the four separate zones on the vacuum table. And these zones allow me to focus the airflow to one area of the table, which will allow me to hold smaller pieces more effectively without losing too much vacuum pressure through the open areas. To control the airflow to these zones, I used these valves, which I also got from Blackbox. Finally, I could connect the shower drains to the valves using some 2-inch PVC pipe and a few elbows, and with that, the system was plumbed up. 
So next I loaded up a piece of MDF on top of the plenum. And this is the part of this vacuum system that was kind of mind blowing to me, as this piece of MDF is the actual spoil board, the cutting surface for the CNC, and the vacuum system is able to pull air through the MDF to hold down whatever is on top of the MDF. It's pretty cool. And I could finally fire up the vacuum for the first time and I turned it on and was a little perplexed as to why the MDF wasn't being held down and I was thinking I did something wrong. And then I realized that all of the valves were closed, meaning that no airflow was getting to the MDF. Once I opened the valves, the MDF was held in place incredibly securely by the vacuum system. There's no way I was going to move it. To improve the vacuum airflow through the MDF, I needed to shave off some material from both faces of the panel. To shave off this layer, I used a 2 inch CNC spoil board flattening bit from Bits Bits, and I first went around the entire bed just to make sure there weren't any major high spots, which there weren't. And because the MDF was already pretty much flat, I could just zero the bit off of the front left corner of the panel and get to flattening, taking off about 30 thousandths of an inch, which as you can see created an unbelievable mess. After skimming the surface off the top face of the MDF, I flipped the panel and repeated the process on the other face, which really opened up the airflow through the MDF. After vacuuming up all that dust off the surface, I could finally try out the vacuum table for the first time, and I used this smaller piece of plywood to test it out. And this piece is about 24 inches by 30 inches, which is a decent amount smaller than the 24 inch by 48 inch zone I'm using here. But even with that much extra surface area, the vacuum still held the piece tightly enough to where there's no way I could have moved it. I tried the same thing with a much smaller piece, and while I could still move the piece a little bit, it was pretty hard to move, and I could add another piece of plywood to cover up that open area to improve the holding power when working on smaller pieces like this. The last thing to do to finish off the vacuum table was to attach the spoil board to the plenum so that it doesn't shift around while the vacuum is off. And I just used a handful of inch and a quarter screws for this. And I made sure to countersink the holes really well to give me plenty of room to flatten the spoil board in the future. And I also referenced the Aspire file just to make sure I wasn't inadvertently screwing into the mounting bolts below the spoil board. So with that, the vacuum table was good to go. And I actually ended up diving right into a really big cabinetry project next, which will be next week's project video. And I'll go into a lot more detail on cutting cabinets on this machine in that video, but I just wanted to quickly show how I whipped up a cabinet for holding my laptop and some other CNC accessories while I was kind of in cabinetry mode. So I got all of the cabinet carcass parts, drawer box parts, and the drawer fronts cut on the CNC. And then I could get everything assembled, which went super quick since all of the joinery was already cut. And I had the CNC go ahead and pre-drill holes so I could assemble the cabinet using screws, since this is just a shop cabinet. And I glued and screwed the cabinet together, which went really quick. Finally, I assembled the drawer boxes, which already had all of the joinery cut using some narrow crown staples and glue. So I ended up using some overextension slides from Rockler on this cabinet, although the CNC did pre-drill mounting holes for Bloom undermount slides, since that's what I had programmed. And unfortunately, I didn't consider that selecting Bloom undermount slides would also slightly change my drawer box dimensions, since Bloom slides don't need as much clearance on either side of the drawer box. And it was at this point, after assembling the cabinet and the drawer boxes and installing the slides, that I realized that my drawer boxes were about three quarters of an inch too wide because of the fact that I had selected the wrong option in the software. That sucks. I didn't really have much of a choice but to rebuild the drawers, which thankfully I was able to get out of some scrap material. But this just goes to show that mistakes made on the CNC can quickly compound and programming the machine correctly is really everything here. Anyway, I got the drawer fronts installed and then the last thing I wanted to add was some casters. And I use these Rockler Total Lock casters, which I use all the time and they work great. And they also raise the cabinet enough to create kind of a quasi toe kick area for when I'm standing at the cabinet working on the laptop that I use with the CNC. Speaking of which, next I can move the cabinet into place next to the CNC, add the laptop on top, and then get the drawers loaded up with all of the various accessories that go along with the CNC. I used this little Rockler foam router bit tray to hold the bits, and it was just a little bit too big for the drawer, so I cut it down in the miter saw and got it fit perfectly in the drawer. After getting it loaded up, the cabinet was good to go, and I am so happy to have gotten this knocked out as it made running the CNC so much easier during my next task, which was building the T-Track fixturing table. This T-Track table was inspired by a similar table built by Legacy CNC, and I made my own version starting in Aspire just to figure out all of the tool paths. And this table mounts on top of the MDF spoil board using some threaded inserts, and the table has replaceable strips on top of a base panel so that I can change out any damaged strips in the future. 
To start the project, I first cut down a few pieces of MDF with the track saw and table saw, making sure to trim off the factory edges while I was at it. Next, I turned on the CNC, loaded up the first G-code file, which would cut the holes for the threaded inserts and the spoil board, and homed the machine before installing the first bit. And I used a 3 8 inch compression bit to cut these holes and zeroed the bit to the front left corner of the spoil board. Also, I 3D printed this little mount for the AutoZ touchplate, which I found on Thingiverse, and it's super handy to have the touchplate here at the front left corner of the machine when I need to change bits. After confirming I had loaded the correct G-code file before cutting into my fresh spoil board, I got to cutting the holes, which went extremely quickly considering the holes were just larger than 3 8 of an inch. Once the program finished, I confirmed the hole size with the drill bit included with the quarter 20 threaded insert kit I was using, which I got from Rockler, and the insert fit great, but next I needed to recess it below the surface of the spoil board so that I can continue surfacing the spoil board in the future without hitting these inserts. And to recess the holes, I chamfered them using a 90 degree V-bit. I had initially set up this program using the new chamfering toolpath option in Aspire, but for some reason I couldn't get it to cut more than a tiny chamfer no matter which settings I changed, so instead I just modified the initial hole drilling toolpath to cut to a shallower depth and ran the program again, and this left me with perfectly chamfered holes, just so satisfying. Once the program finished, I could reinstall the threaded inserts, and you can see how the chamfer allows the insert to be driven much deeper into the spoil board, which gives me plenty of room for surfacing. I installed the rest of the threaded inserts in the spoil board, and then I got the T-Track table base panel mounted on the spoil board, closing all but one of the valves on the vacuum to focus the airflow to that area. The next program I ran cut the through holes for mounting this table to the spoil board, and I used a quarter inch down cut bit for this, but I didn't cut the holes all the way through as I didn't want to accidentally run the bit into the threaded inserts below. Next, I chamfered the mounting holes using the same 90 degree V-bit so that the mounting bolts would be countersunk below the surface of the panel. Finally, I could drill the holes all the way through the panel using a drill, and then I could mount the panel to the spoil board using some brass machine screws. So you might be wondering why I wouldn't just use the vacuum system to mount this table to the CNC, and the main reason is I don't want to have to run the vacuum table continuously to hold down this fixture table, as it not only puts additional wear on the pump motors, but the motors are also <laughs> pretty dang loud. And these screws are really quick to remove and make it super easy to add the table whenever I need it and remove it when I don't. With the panel mounted, I ran the next program, which cut in some shallow grooves to locate the T-Track, as well as some more holes for threaded inserts, which will be used to mount those replaceable strips between the T-Track. And I used that 3 8 inch compression bit again here, but obviously got a decent amount of tear out because the grooves for the T-Track weren't deep enough to get to the down cut portion of the bit. Another issue I ran into was setting the pocket allowance in Aspire incorrectly, and I wanted to add about 20 thousandths of width to the grooves just to make sure the T-Tracks were easy to install, but I programmed this as a positive number instead of a negative number. And because of this, the pocket was actually shrunk by 20 thousandths of an inch, so the T-Tracks didn't fit. Luckily, this was an easy fix and I just reran the program, confirming the fit with a piece of T-Track, and then I quickly cleaned up the fuzzy bits with a sanding block. Finally, I chamfered the holes for the threaded inserts and then got them installed in the panel. Next, I could get the Rockler T-Track installed, which was super simple with those pre-cut mounting grooves. And I initially just screwed down the T-Track using some number six screws, but I felt like they didn't have quite enough holding power in this MDF, so I went ahead and added a bead of CA glue to really lock the T-Track to the MDF, with the screws really just acting as clamps while the glue dried. And I just rinsed and repeated the process for the rest of the T-Track pieces. And once the T-Track was installed, I could rip some MDF strips from the other piece of MDF I had cut initially, which I did at the table saw. And of course, I ripped the strips a little bit too wide initially, hoping for a snug fit, but ending up with an impossible fit, so I had to trim them slightly before getting them mounted. Now obviously these strips need some through holes cut into them for mounting to the threaded inserts, and to hold the strips in place while I ran the CNC to cut those holes, I used the painter's tape and CA glue trick instead of double sided tape. After mounting, I chamfered the holes before actually cutting them since I already had the V-bit installed, and then after drilling the mounting holes, I also drilled some clearance holes so that I could remove the screws holding the entire table down without removing the strips. Once all the holes were cut, I removed the strips, removed the painter's tape, drilled the mounting holes all the way through, and then I could reinstall the strips using some brass machine screws and threaded inserts. 
Also, I used brass screws to hold down the strips here, just in case I accidentally run the bit into the screws when cutting, but I swapped over to some steel machine screws for mounting the table to the spoil board since those screws are below the strips, and having those screws magnetic makes them a lot easier to remove when removing the table. And as you can see, removing the table is as simple as removing a handful of machine screws, and installing the table is the same process in reverse. So with that, besides a quick surfacing of the T-Track table, I could call this CNC ready for action and this project complete. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I am so excited to have this CNC fully set up and dialed in now. So if you guys enjoyed this project and wanna build something similar, I'll have links to all of the tools and materials I use down in the video description below. If it's your first time here, why not go ahead and get subscribed and ring that little notification bell so you don't miss my future videos. And last, I wanna say a huge shout out to all of my YouTube members, as well as my patrons over on Patreon. If you guys wanna learn more about both of those programs, I'll have links to them in the video description as well. All right, thanks for watching everybody. And until next week, Happy building.